was money, and we're going to need it in a major way this coming weekend as well. So thank you so much, Bronco Nation. I'm proud of our team, and i got to give God all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of us growing. we still got a long way to grow. And no different from the first two games to this one, it's all about what did you learn, where are you growing to. And the, the end result is really irrelevant. You win by a lot, you lose by a lot, you lose by a little, you win by a little. It's still, what do we learn? Where are we growing to? And I promise you in all three phases, it's going to be no different with our staff tomorrow when we look at it, no different for our team meeting on Monday. It's all about, okay, where are we growing to? Because the goal is to continue to get better every week. Um, a couple shout outs, I mean, Matt Lauder, a guy that I've talked about these first two weeks that didn't maybe have the production, but was doing everything we asked him to do, from making the hard blocks, open, weren't able to get him the ball, and he was able to come, come up in a major way today. I mean, that's who he is. That's how he practices. That's who he is for this team. Huge shout out to him. Um, he's a guy that, like I said, continues to show it in practice and, and a guy that I cannot be more proud of. I'm um, proud of a couple guys on our D-line, too. I mean, Sheldon Newton continues to do some really good things for us. A guy that, um, you know, was first year was here last year, kept getting better. I think he's, played, he's playing his best football right now. Even Mike Callahan going out there, Braxton Feely, Herbert Gums. I mean, our front D-tackles are doing some really good things um, and, and excited for them to keep learning and growing. So. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm probably missing some guys to give a shout out. Dylan Riley, a young true freshman. Everybody's been hearing about Ash and Genty and Sire Gaines, and rightfully so. They deserve that. Um, but excited to see him come on the scene, have that big time touchdown. I mean, T. Crow, you know, one of our senior leaders, does a lot for us on special teams, and him being able to get that touchdown was huge. Our O line being able to rotate a lot of guys, get a lot of guys um, some reps, is going to help us in the season. The depth that we can create in some of these games, that we can get these guys out there to cut their teeth on O and D and special teams is a huge deal. So thankful for the win, proud of the win. We still got a long way to, to go, and I'm excited to continue to learn and grow. We know we're going to need our, our best football at hand this coming weekend. You touched on a couple of them in your opening statements, uh, but, you know, running backs, you showed your wealth of them tonight. You know, just what do you like from that group, and, you know, what's it, what's it like to have a, a, a position that be that deep at that position? Yeah, I mean, first off, Coach J-Mo does a great job with our running backs. The run game from Coach Cutter to Coach Potter, Coach Keen, the setup runs. I mean, it's so it's, it's very detailed. It's a, it's a plan of attack, um, and I'm, I'm very proud of those guys. I mean, we've got a lot of weapons in that backfield, um, and, and, they're a lot, and they're different in their own way, too. Ash is a little bit different than the side. Dylan's a little bit different than those guys, too. So we got some really good compliments, and we're excited to get Breezy back here soon, too. Did Portland State kind of dictate Louder having that big game, or was that kind of the game plan going in? Louder knew he was going to be the, the focal point on most of the passing. Yeah, John. I mean, there's a couple calls, you know, a couple screens that are designed to truly get Matt the ball. But there was a couple throws in Oregon that was designed to get Matt Louder the ball, but the coverage dictated a throw going somewhere else. Because obviously pass game is, is very dependent on what kind of defensive look and coverage are we getting. Um, Coach Cutter and the offense did a really good job knowing the top coverages we're going to see in these situations and being able to set up Matt Louder. I mean, Matt Louder is a matchup nightmare. Mm -hmm. And being able to put him in situations to do what he did tonight is a huge deal. You were able to get you know pretty deep down the bench you know for the late in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter. How, how nice was that? And also, what was kind of the plan shutting down Ashton at halftime there? Yeah, BJ, it's huge. I mean, it's huge for the depth of our team. I mean, the, the, the long season where we need to go, we, we're a developmental program. Those game reps are critical because everybody's at a different place with 115 young men on this team. Some are the number two that, that think and believe they're the starter. They just need to go put on film. Some are the threes, the fours, that just need to keep learning and growing. I mean, we put some guys out there today that were on scout team all week. Now we got to be able to coach them up on the sideline and be like, hey, come on, this is what we're going to be calling, this is what we're going to be doing, and we're counting on them to steal reps in meetings and be ready to get in. So the, the depth you're able to create by being able to rotate guys later in this game is huge. And with Ashton Genty, it was just it was a call at halftime. You know, looked at it and said, hey, this is where we're at. We start with the ball on offense. We want to roll with T. Crow and Dylan in this, in this drive and kind of see what happens. And he was, he was ready to go. Ashton's helmet was on, ready to go. And as the game progressed, we obviously kept him out. How do you decide when to shut a guy down or when to rotate? Is it just a feeling or do you have a plan kind of going into a game? Yeah, there's a feeling. You feel kind of how the game's going, but I, I take a lot of info with going through some of those things. Because obviously I've been a part of situations in a negative way where you start pulling guys out too early, you lose momentum, you lose the edge, and then you let a team come back in a game. That obviously can't happen. So um, it's a fine line. We've got to be very smart with it. But I also, we're a developmental program. We've got to get guys reps in games because it's the best teaching tool you can. You, the only way to get better at football is playing it, and we got to get guys in there to get them better. What was that communication like with, with J-Mo? Because you, you got, 
other than any update you give us on Sire, but you decide to sit with Asher for the second half, and that leaves you with Tyler Crow and a kid that hasn't, hasn't played before, and then apparently even uh, Wilkie's working his way back into running back now. So what's that communication like, and can you say anything about Sire? Yeah, it was constant communication between me, Coach Jamo, Coach Cutter. We met at halftime about Ash and a couple guys, and, and that was my decision, was like, hey, we're going to sit him for this drive. I, I trust T. Crow, seeing how Dylan Riley uh, performed in practice, because like I've talked about before, for the guys that get in this game, de we're, depending on where they're at in the depth chart, it's all from what they do in practice. It's not what we hope. It's not what their high school or, or JC film looked like. It's what they do here. And the guys that we put in in order, you know, earned it. And so I've seen T. Crow, I've seen Dylan Riley do a really good job in practice, and we knew that, that they can go out and do the same thing and, and made that decision with taking a lot of information because it's a fine line. And we're going to Saturday games. We'll look at it tomorrow. I know our doctors are looking at it. Um, and we'll find out more Sunday. You obviously wanted to work on the passing game, you know, after the Oregon game. How do you think Maddox played and then also uh, getting Malachi in there? Yeah, I thought Maddox was really efficient, made some really good throws. Obviously, when we watch the film, there'll be a couple that I know he's going to want to have back some decisions, whatnot. But proud of how he's efficient with our offense. He knows the offense. He knows how to move the offense. He makes the right throws. He's very efficient with it. Um, it's a testament to how he preps, and he's a competitor. I mean, he's going to find a way to keep the chains moving. I mean, I don't know how many times we punted with, with that group on the field, but it wasn't much. And that's just an efficient offense that he's been able to create. It was awesome getting Malachi some reps, getting him out there. Once again, the feel of being on the field. Game, game reps are so valuable. And what you do in practice and then what you do in the game, and then it's going to be great to look at it and continue to find ways for him to continue to learn and grow. And I know he wants to. Cameron Bates scored his first collegiate touchdown. It seemed like it was an intentional play to you know, get him the ball there. But how about him? I'm assuming it's not, not necessarily supposed to, well, it's not designed to probably cut it back like that. So how much did he just go make a play at one point? It's designed to score a touchdown. You know what I mean? That's how we, you know, but I mean, Cam Bates is a weapon now. I mean, he's going to only continue to get better as a true freshman. Him, him like Dylan, I mean, they got here in June. And seeing him grow and his knowledge of the offense, so we're trying, I mean, he's, he's got a ton of juice. And so seeing him get the ball in his hands, him making moves and scoring um, was, was awesome to see. We're going to continue to find ways to get Aiden the ball. Every single offensive drive for you guys today was under five minutes. Just what can you say about that efficiency and speed? Yeah, I mean, it's a testament to our offensive staff. First off, Coach Cutter and every offensive coach and the buy-in of our players. And, and we know who we are offensively. We're going to run the ball. We're going to use our explosive run attack to set up our pass game. I mean, that's who we are. That's how we're going to attack defenses and we're going to be very efficient with it. You need to. That is the only way to play offense is to, is to be efficient. Inefficient on first down creates second and long, which then creates third and long, right? That's inefficient. And we've had a couple of those things come up in the season. We've got to continue to be better at it, but we did some really good things tonight. With T. Crow being such a big part of this team for the last couple of years, but not always as a ball carrier, how, how meaningful was it to get his first touchdown since, since 2021? It looked like a huge celebration for his teammates. Yeah, but you can see when he scores that touchdown, the love that his teammates have for him because they got a ton of respect for Tyler. I mean, he's a, he's a guy that is blue collar, from Idaho, does everything that we ask him to do, the hard stuff on special teams. He figures out a way, and he's a great teammate. He loves his teammate. He's that guy that does all the, you know, everything you need to be successful in this program, he does. So seeing him score that touchdown, and I mean, the, the sideline erupted, that's a testament to who he is as a teammate, too. With the, uh, Matt, Sheldon, Matt. You brought up Sheldon Newton, and uh, he used to just be a big dude. Now he's a big dude that, I mean, he looks like he can legitimately move a little bit. No question. How, how much, I mean, he's a sixth year guy, like, but how much is he still, Coming into his own oh, I mean, how how Sheldon was able to transform his body from when he got here last a year ago, January to now. I mean, it's a testament to his hard work, Coach Hilgard, Coach Chins working with him. I mean, he is playing his best football right now, and the amount of weight he's lost, how strong he is, and that's a testament to how he trained. I mean, his first summer here, the X were hard. It, it, it took him to the end. I mean, he crushed him this summer. So what he's doing now is not shocking for the guys that have been around him because I saw him train in the offseason, saw him have his summer training, and he's moving and playing out a way in a way that um, is exceptional. I mean, he's doing some amazing things. Obviously, there's still some things that I'm excited for him to grow in. But, I mean, you look at last week, this week, or two weeks ago we played Oregon, and now, I mean, he's – He's a dominant force inside. He's only going to be better. Which special team? You, you were six for six tonight in the red zone. I think you came into this game nine of nine. Most of these are touchdowns. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from the red zone offense? Yeah, I mean, it's such a huge part to winning game is touchdowns in the red zone. And we put it on a premium. We work that all the time. Obviously, the game plan from Coach Cutter and our offensive staff is scoring touchdowns. And we're going to be on the attack. 
Because the difference between, I shouldn't say settling for field goals, you want to get points, but the difference between getting a field goal and a touchdown is a huge explosive in the game. And when you look at the three main stats, the effort you play with, explosives and takeaways, red zone touchdowns are huge. Special teams, some good and some bad, you know, the two blocked kicks, but uh, muffed punt, you yep. know, and then a 13 yard punt from JFR yep. too. I mean, just what did you see on special teams? We just got to be way more consistent, BJ. And like I said, I mean, Coach Collins does a phenomenal job. We got to continue to find the guys that can be consistent. Perform in practice, do it in the game. I and mean, there was a sky punt situation where we're punting into the end zone that we screwed up. We practiced it. We got to be able to execute that in the game to pin them on the two yard line. That can't happen. JFR, can't, you know, I, I think the absolute world of him. He's got to be more consistent. He's got to play better, and he knows that. He's a competitor. He's got to continue to learn and grow. So there's a lot of things that we just got to be more consistent on special teams to win the games we need to go win. Oh, nice one. Blocked field goals, though. It was huge. I mean, uh, the plan in place to be able to attack that protection and go block those field goals, turning. Once again, if those were touchdowns or even points, this game looks a little bit different. So being able to turn those into really true turnovers with the blocked field goals was huge, you know, it was a big play in the game. Matt Lauder being able to rec uh, recover after that uh, that fumble and bounce back. I mean, obviously he's a veteran, you know, that's what you expect him to do, but how happy were you to see him to just get back out there and just go score that touchdown? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, it's next play mentality. Learn and grow from what happened before, good, bad, or indifferent, and it's next play mentality. Let's be on the attack. And, and, a, and a guy like Matt Lauder, who is a competitor, and he trains the way he needs to to be ready for those moments, he corrects it, he moves on, and we have the you know full trust in Matt Lauder. Still think in the past when it was almost like someone would be punished if they put the ball on the ground. But what about the Saturday games at Georgia Southern? This, you know, tonight with Matt Louder, like you, you don't, you don't, it's not in game punishment, it doesn't feel like. So, yeah. what, what's, your, what's your thought on that or your process there? Yeah, I, I want our players to trust their training. You know, here we put a premium on our practice performance, like I keep saying. And, and so, from the ball security drills to how we carry the ball in practice, these guys have the right habits. Now, in a moment like that, we obviously didn't. But I trust our guys to go out there, fix it, no different than any other fundamental from catching the ball to making a tackle, that I want to build in these guys and empower them to have the confidence to go out and do it again. By taking things from them or making them out there, I do not want our guys to fear failure. I want them to attack success, right? Which is two very different things. I don't want anyone going out there, I hope I don't fumble. I hope I don't fumble. I hope I don't fumble. Because usually sometimes you do. It happens. But I want our guys to attack success. No, learn from it, grow from it, go out there and attack success and, and, and do that the next play. And that's a testament to what Matt Ladder did tonight. Last one. What do you know about uh, and how much have you seen Washington State? Did you see last night's game? And, and how much prep have you done on those guys? Yeah, we, we did preseason scout on them. Um, was, was able to do some work on them the bye week prior to Portland State. I mean, know those coaches really well. Was able, I mean, I think their quarterbacks, one of the best ones we'll see all year. Um, you know, they're explosive on offense. They got a great defense. I, I know their defensive staff well, respect them. They're going to be really good on special teams. And that's a testament to why they're 4 0. And we know they're going to come in here ready to roll and we got to be ready too. So we, we got our, we got our, you know, work out, cut out for us. And we, we got a lot of things we got to be ready to stop. They're an explosive offense. They're good on defense. They're really good on special teams. So all three phases got to show we got to play our best football. We need Bronco Nation to be here and be loud. And it's going to take everything to win this game next weekend. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.